So now let's take a quick look at the step sequencer. To access the step sequencer, all you have to do is come down to the edit window here and click step. This is actually how you scroll through the individual screens of Project Chaos. So in the step sequencer here, you can turn it on and off with this little uh, power button here. Once engaged, uh, you'll be able to hear. Uh, we can hear no sound because we currently have no steps. So the step sequencer is actually the reason Project Chaos is called Project Chaos in the first place. And the reason being is because every individual step of this step sequencer also has its own sub sequence. Now a sub sequence is made up of the volume. So that is simply just the volume of the note. Where within the sample it starts. The start sequence has its own uh, zoom in window here. So you can actually choose specifically where in the loop you'd like it to start. Very useful. And then you just click step to return. Then we have the tune, which changes the pitch. You can again, control or command click to return to normal and pan. Now, these step sequences are not restricted to just one individual step. And again, this is why it's called chaos. Each individual step can have multiple steps within it. So now this one step now has four steps inside it. And we can change. As you can hear, that's repeating very quickly. I'm just going to slow the rate down. Now, what we can do here is we can change where in this one single step, it can go through four different sample start positions. So all of, the, all of that chaotic rhythmic nonsense there is all happening within one step. So now what we can actually do is bring this out and let's say we can change the amount of steps up to eight. So in order to choose how many steps are actually going to play back, you do that here. You can change the rate here. So you hear this first step has a lot more interest in it. And then what it does is it's just repeating the same uh, sample start over and over again because we haven't changed it. And a pro tip here, something that makes it very easy to set up a sequence is if you click your mouse over the start uh, sample start window and then play back the sound, what will happen is it will register where your mouse is whilst it's playing back. So you don't have to click on each individual step to change the start. You just play it back. And as you can see, it registered where my mouse was whilst it was on that step and it recorded that information into the start menu. You can scroll individually through the steps just by clicking above them here on the track window. And again, if you are in the sample start, you can choose which step you're actually controlling uh, here. So if we come over to like maybe this step here and we didn't like. Let's say this one was sounding too similar to the one before. We can actually just come here and change where it's gonna start. Very, very easy to use. It's complex in its use, but it's very easy to use. So now, as we mentioned before, we have our menu mode. So if we switch menu mode on, what that means is every individual key down below here is a new sound. And again, this sequence will remain regardless of what sound. So we can actually just change the sound uh, bank that uh, this step sequence is related to, and now it will continue to work with anything. Now, one thing you may notice is if you play multiple keys, you're only going to get one sound playing back. And that's where the Ost ostinato uh, engine comes into play. So to use this, what you do is you click the number and then either drag up or down and you have up to eight individual notes. So what this refers to is if I play three notes, if we look down the bottom here, I'm just voicing a D minor chord. So number one, when ostinato up is selected and ostinato down does the opposite of what I'm about to explain. But when ostinato up is engaged, number one will always be the furthest key to the left that you play. And then the higher the number, 
will be the, the highest number will always be the, the one on the far right. And it will go like, so if I play three notes here and change this to number three, let's say this one to number two, and again, this one to number three, and then let's put a fourth one on the end there. Now, if I hold three keys, you'll hear it will actually trigger, because we're in menu mode, different loops. Because I'm not holding a fourth note, nothing plays there. However, if I introduce a fourth note into this sequence, you will hear it play back. And that's a very easy way to get these very, very interestingly rhythmic complex, rhythmically complex uh, loops playing back when what you're actually doing is triggering multiple loops. So you're able to create loops that don't exist by combining all your old loop banks. And if you combine this with the bank manager and the ability to import your own loops, all of those old samples that have been on your hard drives for years not being used now have a use. You can import them into Chaos and they can become a simple step in a much bigger rhythm, such as this. Now this note is a little bit chaotic, so I'm just gonna bring this down to one step, just, so, just for the ease of use for now. And of course you can change this on the fly. So all it's doing is uh, it's registering which is the furthest, which is the third key in your current player. So in this, as you can see, I'm just holding them down. This would be one, two, three, because it will hold, it will go from the left and it will count the keys upwards. And again, it's not tied. Uh, so if I change the bank, this is going to just remain where it is. So if I create a sequence that I like, I can just try it out with different sounds. That was a poor one to use. And again, because our loops are tempo synced, they will always be in time. So if I slow this down to fourth, if, if this loop is playing back 16th and I set this down to fourth, it will allow the 16th to play because each step is being held for the duration of a quarter note. But if I speed it up, it won't have enough time to play all of those notes, so it'll be a lot more snappy. You can bring it all the way down to like a half bar or a single bar. And because we're changing the sample start with every step, even though we're triggering the same loop every time this number one happens, because we're starting it in a different place, we have different elements of that loop filling in different gaps, meaning that it's going to be very difficult to replicate any loop that you create again and again, meaning that everything you create is going to be very, very bespoke and very unique to you. Very powerful. And here we have the gate control. What this does, this actually overrides the ADSR to a degree. This will make each step's length uh, determined by the gate. So at the minute at full, it will always play the full, uh, the full step. And if we bring the gate down, you'll hear it will become much snappier. Which is more useful if you're doing things like rhythmic taps. Because as you can hear, some of these samples have uh, a little bit of tail to make them more uh, full and realistic. But if you just want it to tap along in the background, you can use the gate to control that. Saving you, have, saving you having to mess with the ADSR. So that is, in a nutshell, the Chaos Step Sequencer.